this video we're going to build a query in Google Sheets that allows you to group your data by just the month when you have a date column. So you can see here I have a data set of loan detail information and this last column here we have the disbursement date and this data set is for all loans that were dispersed in the year 2020 and what we want to do is build a query that groups by just the month and sums the loan amount. So we'll get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is add a new sheet where our query will live. We'll begin our query statement. First input is the data we want to query off of, which is the loan detail on the previous tab. So I'm going to go back there. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up a curly bracket because curly brackets can handle arrays in Google Sheets and what we want to do is create two arrays. The first one's going to be the first six columns, everything except this date column, and then we're going to add a second array of just the date disbursement date column because we need to nest that within a couple of functions to convert it to a month end date. So our first array is going to be columns A through F all the way down to the last row. I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down. Our second array is going to be just our date column. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to end our curly brackets there. Now what I want to do is nest this within first the end of month function. And what the end of month function does is it can convert dates to month end dates. It can actually also take a date value and increment it into months into the future or into the past based on what you specify. So it has two inputs. The first one is the start date, which is our column value here. And then the second one is how many months month ends do you want to go into the future or the past? Well, we want to get the month end date for the date in question. We want to keep it as the same month, but convert it to month end. So we're going to put a value of zero there. Now the end of month function does not output an array. And since we're in a query, we're dealing with an array here. So we need to nest this within the array formula. And what that does, it just has one argument and it converts non-array outputs to arrays. So that's why we have that there. So now we're back into our query statement and the second argument is our select statement. So it begins with the keyword select and then the columns and output we want to see. So I just want to keep this simple. I want an output that just has the month and then sums this original mount column here. Now, since we created separate arrays in our first argument, we cannot you know, refer to the columns as the column letter. We have to use the column numbers like column one, column two, column three. So keep that in mind. So we want to select this last column, which is column seven. And we also want to sum on the original mount column. So that's column E or should I say column five, since we aggregated uh, column five, we need to include a group by statement and group by column seven. Now I know this column seven will not have a header because we nested it within these functions here. So I'm gonna also include a label clause and refer to column seven again and then give it a label. We'll just call this month. And that is the end of our second input for the query statement. Our final input is the number of row headers we have, which is one. So I'll hit enter and you can see this converts everything to the month end date. You might be thinking right now, well, I, I'd rather have it as text, like the month name. So if you wanted to change it, what we could do is after our label statement, we can format column seven. And to format a date as a month, we have to 
just type M four times and closed in single quotes and that will convert that to the month as text. We can also format the output of these values here because they're not really formatted as like an accounting or currency. So we can say, you know, comma, sum, column five. We want to format this as some sort of a currency. And there we have it. So now let's say we wanted to filter this on a specific month. We can hit F2 to go back into our query function. And after our last column selection, but before our group by, I'm going to insert a where condition. So again, our criteria column is column seven, and we want anything in column seven that is equal to the month of May. So that is gonna be equal to, and we have to begin date criteria with the keyword date, so keep that in mind. And then remember that truly our query, although it's formatted as text for a date output, um, the query itself is actually outputting this as the end of month function. So you need to input a end of month date in your where statement. So that needs to be enclosed in single quotes and it's in the format of four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. So if we wanted anything that was equal to the month of May, I would just put where column seven equals date and then month in May. And you can see it filters our list based on May. If I wanted a range, maybe May to July, we can change this to greater than or equal to and then use and. And then again, we have to refer to column seven less than equal to date and then the end of our date range, which is July 31st, 2020. And you can see we get the months of May through July. So that is how you can group by a date field in your query output, group it by month, and then also query on certain months of your data set. Hey, if you like what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.